Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be cooking up some meals for my family. Now this is the last video of me cooking in this current kitchen. I'm in the middle of a move and I'm moving everything over to our new place. I'm not really doing too much cooking right now. So this is all just uh, footage of before in my kitchen where I have cooked and I haven't found a place to put these meals yet. So this is one breakfast and then some dinners of what I cook with what's in my pantry. If you're new to the channel, my name is Carolina. I live in Montana. I do a lot of pantry cooking, budget shopping, and product reviews on my channel. I'm also currently in the middle of a move, so I got that content up. And if that's what the kind of content you're looking for, I hope you consider subscribing. I'd love to have you come join my YouTube family. All right, guys, so let's get into the kitchen and let's see what I make with what I have on hand. For today's breakfast, I'm going to be making a bologna egg and cheese sandwich. This is one of our favorite things to make. One of my aunts used to make this for me growing up, but she always did a microwaved egg and she did ham. So this is kind of a sandwich that I've been adapting throughout the time. I toasted my bun a little bit. I'm going to put my bologna down. I'm going to put some mayonnaise on there. Now when you're putting mayonnaise on something, you can't just have a thin layer where you can see the bread in the bottom. you got to put a layer on there. And now I'm going to flip my bologna. It did stick a little bit. I was hoping that the fat from the bologna would kind of sizzle it. I should have put some oil down, but that's okay. I'm still going to use this pan. I'm going to drop a little bit of oil in. That was just olive oil. And now I'm going to be frying up a turkey egg. This is from our turkey cake. She's a good turkey and she lays really good eggs. And honestly, it tastes exactly like a chicken egg. The only thing is that it's a little bigger. So we love having our turkey eggs. So I'll do that instead of two um, chicken eggs sometimes. I'm just moving it around so it doesn't get stuck trying to cook it all I threw a little bit of salt and pepper on there husband does not like runny eggs so I had to make sure that that egg is cooked and there you go that is one delicious bologna egg and cheese sandwich now I'm going to move on to a couple of dinners that I've made. This is kind of like a ranch pork chop with rice for the sides. I vacuum seal it in the package so I know the date on it. I know exactly how much it is, what it is. So that has really worked out for me and I wish I would have thought of that a lot sooner. Um, I'm going to be sprinkling on some ranch seasoning. I'm going pretty heavy on this because it tends to not hold the flavor like you'll put it on there and be like I don't taste anything so I'm going heavy with the ranch maybe because it's just an off-brand ranch um, you can also add some salt on there too because there's no salt in there so I'm going to drop some olive oil into the pan this is the same pan I used for breakfast and then we're going to put the pork chops in there sometimes I cook pork and then I dice it up and I'll mix it in with it depending on how I'm feeling and I like kind of like that one pot meal now I'm going to be adding some chicken stock to my rice. That's all I had was about a little bit left in this container and I didn't want to open up a new one. So I went ahead and just added water to that to the amount that I needed. These pork chops cooked for about three to four minutes per side. I was just going till they were nice and seared. They're pretty thin, so you don't have to worry about undercooking them. So then I added all the chicken slash water mix to my pan. I'm gonna deglaze it, which means I'm gonna use that liquid to scrape all those crusty bits that came off of the pork. That has a lot of flavor in there, and we're gonna scrape that so that gets incorporated to our rice. Since we're using the same pan, might as well get all the flavor that was in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the two. I think I mixed and matched them. I did like a chicken one and then I did a cheddar broccoli, whatever, they're pretty much all the same anyway. So I'm gonna cook this to the instructions. I think it's about 12 minutes or so. And then for the last five minutes, I'm going to open it up and put some fresh broccoli florets in there. That way it'll cook in there and the, the broccoli will have lots of flavor and I don't have to worry about trying to like cook it in the microwave or cooking something else just cook it in one pot with everything and it came out perfect so you want to do that like the last five minutes of cooking rice so here it is after it has sit for about 20 minutes we're going to fluff it up and that is our side it's kind of like the chicken broccoli cheddar rice with broccoli pieces in it and then we have our pork chop here I think that was really good and it was a tasty dinner the kids of course had to eat it with ketchup but they ate it up for this next dinner, I had a pound of Italian sausage that I need to get used up. I have some whole grain rotini, a little under a pound, and then I have some leftover white queso that I made from my Mexican feast. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it linked below. But I was trying to get that used up, so I decided to turn it into a pasta. So I have our Italian sausage all cooked up. It is draining. I boiled the rotini noodles and then added the cooked sausage to it. And then the queso is going to kind of be like our sauce. 
This pasta is inspired by one that we had at Applebee's. We would use our dip meat, our queso dip to do a chicken pasta and it was really good. So that's kind of where I got the idea to use the last of this queso. And it's a good way to stretch it where the, the whole family can enjoy it without having to split it up and everybody getting a small amount. Making it into a pasta sauce is a really good to, way to utilize leftover queso. So I gave it a taste and dang I'm good. It is ready to go. For tonight's dinner, I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to use my Dreo to cook some stuffed chicken breasts that I got at Super One. This is an Amer or this is an asparagus stuffed one, and then the other one is the Southwest. I'm always scared to cook stuffed chicken breasts because it seems like they always seem raw in the middle. I never seem to get it done correctly like this something about them being stuffed makes them a little harder for me to cook but with the Dreo it has a probe which is just a temperature gauge there that I'm going to use I fought with it a little bit so I gave up but then I went to the cooking and I went to chicken and it said please enter the probe so I was like well I'll give it a try again and what do you know it worked so if you don't succeed do it again and then it's asking for some water in the top so i filled that up and then it was calculating how long to take and it said 24 minutes i was like all right that's pretty cool it gives you how much time you think is left it said it was resting which is important for me to meet to rest so that was kind of cool and i think they turned out perfectly you always got to give them that poke test to make sure they're done and then um that was it the grill plate in there helped cook the bottom of it as well you got to have a kid come he's like what's that he had a little bit of it but this was just for husband and i and i made the kids something else i do that a lot i'll make two separate meals i don't see anything wrong with that and it was really good it had like this creamy cream cheese pepper kind of stuffing i don't know exactly what was in it but definitely cream cheese because it was um creamy in there and it was good with the asparagus and then um with the bacon it was kind of limp on the bottom but it was still uh really good wrapped around and the top was crispy so this was really good and it's definitely helping me get over my fear of cooking stuffed chicken or stuffed things because it had that temperature probe in there to be able to make sure that it's cooked to the right temperature because it was not undercooked raw in any way we were really happy with this for tonight's dinner i just shaved a whole turkey going and buying a turkey when it's on sale at the chef's store and shaving it myself saves us a lot of money when it comes to lunch meat i am looking for a different meat slicer though because that one's kind of scary it slips a lot but this is the whole pile of turkey that i got so since i just sliced it and i have it available we're just going to make some turkey and cheese hot sandwiches so i'm going to cut the rolls in half this is just a 12 pack of rolls this would make a good appetizer or like simple sandwiches to bring to a party so i'm going to put some ranch on there mayonnaise would be good mustard would be good you know whatever you like on your turkey sandwiches bacon would be good on this as well if you like avocado put avocado on there you know tons of options that you can do so i'm just putting ranch because i'm trying to use up the last of this jar and who doesn't love ranch so that's going to be our base and then we're going to add our turkey to there i'm just kind of doing a couple of slices per roll you could separate these so they're individual but i find keeping them together makes it a little easier to cook and then i'm going to be putting cheese over them too so that way i don't have to cut individual little squares i can just kind of do strips like that and then it'll stay Oh, it looks like I did individual squares anyway. I guess my OCD kicked in. So anyway, they each got their own little slice of Colby Jack cheese on there. And this Dreo means business. So I'm only going to cook this for two minutes because I just want them kind of heated up. I don't want them super crispy. I still want them like a nice, soft, gooey hot sandwich. And that worked out perfectly. Like I've learned through cooking bagels that the Dreo is like two minutes and everything's toasted. So this was really good. And the, between the five of us, we just gobbled this whole plate up now I'm sure you're curious because you see the turkey in the background there and I vacuum sealed it and two of these went into the freezer and then two of them stayed in the fridge because by the time we were done with the first one the other one was still good so I got four packages of turkey that saved me a bunch by slicing it myself so what do you guys think of those dinners I thought they were really good the queso pasta is my favorite if you haven't tried queso in a pasta yet you definitely need to do that now for this next one, I left this one towards the end because it's kind of like raw footage of just me and my daughter cooking some pancakes together. So we're kind of talking about how to do it. It's just box pancake mix that we cook. So it's nothing too special. And I left it towards the end for those who didn't want to watch it.
but it's super cute and it's just a fun way to see what kids are like in the kitchen and the kind of questions that they ask. So if you want to watch it, Sweetie Pie is saying that you should. Here is a video of me and Betty Jan cooking some pancakes. All right, Betty, what are we making? Pancakes. Pancakes. All right, and we're going to use the... What's in my mind? Oh, it's just a bunch of different packs. Like, it comes with four of these packs, I think. Or three. Oh, there's three in here. So three of these. And it's equal parts water to mix. I have one. We got one open. And then we measured out one of these of mix. So put that in there. Okay. And we fill it up again. And then we'll fill it up with water. No, it's a thing. Yep, we'll fill this up with water. We'll see if that's enough. You think that'll be enough pancake mix? Two no. cups? No. no. I don't think that would be enough. Okay, go ahead and fill it up again though. Because we need enough for everyone. That's true. Plus, if we have extra, what can we do with the leftovers? Because just eat them. Save them for later, yeah. Maybe we could freeze them. Yay! Oh, good job, good job. Well, I, I think that's I enough for you for now. Yeah, now we gotta add the water. water. Should we add a little vanilla too? Yeah. Vanilla adds some good flavor. Uh, I guess that was just a bit too full. Be super careful because it's super full. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't realize we were going to do four cups. I thought we were just going to do the two. But that's okay. So we just slowly that mix okay. this. That, I said okay. Yep. I mean okay. It's okay. Now, if you were going to turn this into waffles, we would add a little bit of oil to this. I'm going to have for dinner. Waffles for dinner? Yeah. Do we have any for the Maybe. It's quite a bit too much water. Vanilla. Vanilla. Yep. Just a little. That's too much. I didn't even add <laughs> some. <laughs> Good, a little more. Good. It's pretty strong. That's strong? Yeah. Let's see, let's get that one. Did we get all the way in the bottom? It's so sticky. I'm going to stick it to the whisk. 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 I think we're going to have to add a little more pancake mix. Why? Because this looks a little too... Runny, Lumpy. runny, like too much water. Make sure it doesn't touch the batter. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah! okay, that's good. I think that's enough. I think so too. You know what I mean, the flour. I I keep forgetting at this. Oh, <laughs> pancake mix. Pancake mix. Yeah. I, I mean, it does have flour in there. Pretty much all in pancake mix is just flour, sugar, salt, and baking salt? powder. Yep, salt, baking <clears throat> powder, and yeah, eggs. Vanilla. Vanilla and eggs. And eggs. Yeah. It's easy enough. Wait, all right, I thought, there we I go. I thought we need an egg with this. But no, I... this has powdered eggs in it already. Powdered eggs in it already? Yeah. yeah, so you don't need to add eggs. Uh. All right, we're going to be using our grill, grill here. Let's see. Let me my favorite. This is my favorite pancake scoop paddle there. Why? Because it, I feel like it makes really good sized pancakes without having them too big and it makes them easy to flip. What are you getting? I'm looking for the chocolate chips. Uh, though I feel. Well, I have a container of them. Ah. Like a jar of them. Remember that we used to take that jar that was just eating them? Yeah. I think they're in the other cubby. cubby where, 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 where the sprinkles are. Are they? Yeah, I think so. Actually, I don't know. I'm just saying I think. I don't see them. What did you put them? Well, I'm gonna have to get in that container then. Wait, what is, what is there a mini bucket that's a mini chips? Yep, there should be another one like this that'll have M-I-N-I -I in it. 
M I M I. Yep. Let's see how I can it. Okay. I love you, Kanan. All right, well, let's get in Wait, this one. Wait, is it, is it this bucket? Oh, this is it? Oh, okay, perfect. M-I-N-I. -I. Good, mini. Mini chips. Where do I put the bucket? All right, I'm gonna put a little. Butter? Oh, ah! It's a big deal. <laughs> Everybody else is just kid, just scream. Like every noise is just a scream. I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm just, you know, I'm just playing. I know, it's just so loud. Okay. Get back on light. Okay. So I put a little bit of butter down. And I'm going to put my pancake. You know what? It makes the perfect size. Yeah, see, that's a pretty good size pancake. Usually do four on here. Oops. A little bit more. It's a good chocolate I can't reach all the way to. Alright, just do the first two then. Okay, these two? Yep. And then when you put chocolate chips on it, I like to kind of add a little more toffee or uh, batter or at least push these in. Because if the chocolate chip goes right against the griddle, it'll burn. So you kind of want to mix it in a bit. Alright, that's good. It that doesn't mean add more. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I cannot. And then we wanted some sprinkles in the other one. Halloween sprinkles, why not? Get us in the mood. It already passed Halloween. Or it's not Halloween yet. Depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Wait. It's next to Mother's Day. I mean, I mean, the Father's Day. Um, the next, yes, in the summer. Next right around your birthday. It's Father's Day? Yep. You know, you were four days old when it was your first Father's Day. Mm, yeah. Yep, you were four days old. Four? Four. For hey. Dad's first, first Father's Day. Hey! <laughs> Are you even talking to me? You stinker. <laughs> Mine. Mmm. Good for that. You got some chocolate chips. Open up. Um. <laughs> Good job. It's Good job, Sharon. It's just the play that we're using? Yes. Alright. Nothing too crazy today, just some pancakes. Oops. Alright. So we got the chocolate no, ones the here. Pancake. And then the sprinkles. You're missing up here. Alright, we're just gonna keep doing this back and forth. I like putting butter down to help get it yeah, so crispy. I want to see the pancake. This is sprinkle ones. Two are sprinkles, two are chocolate chip. No. I like the top of your baby. I think a chocolate chip got in my shot. Oh boy. Let's get that out later. Oh, it came out. <laughs> I think I can that one. There we go. Why do you like to put why do you like to put that on top of the chocolate chips? Because if you don't, then the chocolate chips will burn. So they kind of get mixed in with with it. Alright, let's see, and then there are these two other sprinkle ones. But um, that has chocolate chip in it. Does it? I thought this is a chocolate chip, and this is a chocolate chip. Uh, I accidentally put chocolate chips in that oh, one. Oh, well, you got sprinkle and chocolate chip in this one. Like, Double bonus. Nothing. Chocolate chips. Be ac I accidentally put the chocolate chips in a sprinkled one. All right, and then here That's is okay. the pancakes, ones with the sprinkles. There we go. Did you want you like a sprinkle one? And that's all for breakfast today. I think this is a sprinkle one. Here. It's inside. The sprinkles are inside. What do you think? Good. All right. Let's say we'll catch you next time.
<laughs> well guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for coming along with me in my kitchen and seeing what I whip up from everyday ingredients. Sweetie Pie says bye and we'll catch you next time on Mama Guys.